Let's us verify who is this podcaster and where is he? Yeah, you can't just do this stuff and, uh, without identifying yourself. Yeah. Yeah, who are you and why are you doing this podcast? Yeah. Well, we'll find that out. Basically, I'm reading the Sufi poetry, or the Urdu Sufi poetry of Buddha Shah. Well, yeah, well, why don't you, can't you identify something from, about him? Like, uh, when is he born, even? My God. Can't you say something? <laughs> Yeah, well, can't you identify him? Yeah, well, who is he? Is he a poet from the 17th century, Punjab? Uh -huh. Yeah, and I thought he was Saeed. He's a Saeed Abdullah Shah Qad Qadri. Oh, he's a, a Saeed, popularly known as Bula Shah. And, Buddha, and was a Persian philosopher and Sufi poet during the 17th century. His first spiritual teacher was Shah Inrakudari, a Sufi Masjid of Lahore. He was a mystic poet and is universally regarded as the father of a Punjabi enlightenment. Yeah, that's just from Wikipedia. And he's born 1680. Pakistan died 17. 57, Pakistan. Oh, it's Pakistani. What's Tasa? Well, that's the word they use for Sufism, I guess. Oh, now I understand better. Okay. Yeah, you should read more of this stuff. I might understand it. Mas, Mas, Mayor. Yeah. Oh, okay. So now it makes more sense. So let's identify who is the lover and where he is. Well, He's, um, he is Bula Shah. He's actually Saeed. Abdullah Shah Qadri. Qadri. He's a Saeed, which means he's a descendant from the Prophet, Mike Muhammad. But, but I am, I haven't identified uh, myself as uh, descending from the Prophet, even though I have um, something like, is it point two or... beginning it started. I don't want a problem. No more problems. I'm not going to give it. Oh, 
I have a small percentage of my genes from the Middle East. Really? So you're an Arab? Uh, yeah, well, no, it's <laughs> it's from Northern Africa. There's something, it was something. It's not very much. Uh, it's like 0.2%. Uh, you know, everybody comes out of Africa. Yeah. Yeah, everybody descends from two people born in Africa, like Adam and Eve, and that's science. And this is science. This is I'm not reading from the Bible. Oh, oh, I see. No, I'm just reading from scientific reports here. So I'm identifying myself as a DNA code identified persona. Yeah, my uh, my identity is that of from uh, 23 and me, which is exact. Yeah, everything I do here is absolutely exact and scientific. Uh -huh. 23 and me. Oh, so you're not just a goofy, uh, uh, goofy mystic poetry reader. You're an exact scientist. Yes. Oh, okay. And you read from Wikipedia. Is that exact? <laughs> yeah, that's extremely scholastic and exact. Oh, I thought it wasn't, and some people criticized it. Yeah. Well, yeah, then nothing is exact, okay? Even 23andMe, the GNA code is only an estimate, I suppose. Yeah, but I am, um, we verify who is the lover. Yeah, he is about 40% um, English and Irish, let's say. And he's 20% about uh, French and German. Oh, then why don't you read this in French? Um, or read it and translate it to German? Or, or why, uh, why don't you read it in English? Or why aren't you reading it in Urdu? And how much do you have from India? But you don't have very much, so how could you read the Urdu? Yeah. What's to verify who is the lover and where he is? Well, he's he is in uh, the Bula was in Pakistan at the time, and uh, and uh, it's not Pakistan. There was no such thing as Pakistan at that time. What's wrong with you? Well, all right. So he's in the Punjab. Uh, yeah. Um, and I'm in uh, Queens, New York. Why well, you thought you said New York? Or is it Queens or is it New York? What's the difference? Oh, well, this is similar to Punjab in Pakistan. Uh, yeah. Well, wait a minute. I thought your GPS was like, even it's confused. Yeah. At one minute, it'll say East Elmhurst. Then it'll say Flushing. Then it'll say Jackson Heights. Then it'll say Queens. Then it'll say New York. So, are you all of those things? Or is it this just the GPS is not exact and is not scientific? Yeah. Yeah, it's not accurate. Uh, oh, my God. You're kidding me. Yeah, that's why... I live in East Elmhurst and Jackson Heights and Flushing and Queens and New York. Oh, is it the postman that's mixed up? Or are you trying to mix us up? No, I'm trying to identify where he is. But you're saying you can't identify very well because the postman is uh, kind of cuckoo. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm saying uh, we better stick to mystical poetry and not try to find the answer in science okay and then read poetry instead okay let's verify who is the lover and where he is the moment i fell in love i lost my creed yeah what happened to so uh, i lost my when i fell in love i lost my creed yeah, I lost my uh, beliefs and uh, I lost all my preconceptions. They were erased. Oh, really? What happened to you? you the moment I fell in love, I lost yeah. my creed. Oh, yeah, is that when you lost your... Uh, 
Uh, conviction to only one religion and adopted all of them. Yeah, I became interested in you. When you fall in love, or let's say you reach initial enlightenment or get initiated, or you are interested in the path of the masters, then you they they present the path and with evidence from all religions. So you could become interested in all religions and. You might, if you you were in the default religion of Americans, which is Protestant materialism. I was a Protestant materialist. I believed in the per the meaning of material things, so I lost my belief in materialism. The moment I fell in love, I lost my creed. Oh. Yeah, I realize that maybe Protestantism is actually just capitalism. Yeah. Wow, you're pretty mean. That's a pretty rough thing to say about the Protestants. To, well, if you do uh, brains, if you count their thoughts about what they're thinking about, and just do a s statistical scientific analysis of what they're thinking about, they're thinking about most of the time materialistic things. Oh, okay. So you're saying scientifically, on a scientific analysis of thought counts, that they're thinking about their making money in their car and their house, and that they are materialist. Yeah. So I lost my creed. The moment I fell in love, I lost my creed. God gave me a new identity. Yeah. I was given a new identity, and. Uh, I was given five charge names, and I became identified with them. God gave me a new identity. He is closer than the juggler vein. It's believed. Yeah, the Muslims believe that God is actually closer to you than your juggler vein, because wherever you are, if you're somebody, he's probably up in the third eye, or he's everywhere, and uh, that's closer than your juggler vein. <laughs> <laughs> Where is God in this podcast? Okay, the moment. Air became herself. The Ranja youth. In the absence of God, our problems created. Yeah, in the absence of God, our problems created. So, yeah, the process of not being in meditation is called the absence of God. And when you're in the absence of God, are problems created? If so, in the absence of God, which is in a mystical state of enlightenment, with your mind stopped. In the absence of God is when your mind continues to think. Are problems created? In the absence of God, are problems created? They, there are not many who know this truth. Yeah, and very few people know about this. So, hmm. That's why I'm podcasting this. Oh, really? You making who go? Or what is all that? Oh, she is. She, she uh, knows the truth of the important, importance of vegetarian juice. Because she uh, fell in love with him. There are not many who know this truth, that one should be a vegetarian or a vegan, even better. There are not many who know this truth, except for my wife knows the truth about veganism. Oh, she's a vegan? Yeah. In the absence of a vegan diet, are problems created? There are many who know, many, uh, there are not many who know this truth. Oh, okay. The people made him say, Anohaka. Anohaka. That's like, a, it's either Persian or Arabic. Or, because, mm, anohaka. The people made him say, Mansur would not go about bragging. They called himself Mula and made muck. Hmm. 
Jews. They made, they call themselves, they call themselves Mua and make muck, which is M-U-C-K. Monser would not go about bragging. They call themselves Mua and made muck. Okay. Yeah, we had, uh, they have muck, uh, which is like black uh, dirt. Uh, they called it muck up in Sowerville, Sowerville, Ohio. Bear Willard is muck. Uh, yeah, they call themselves Mula. I called myself a Mula, and I went to Sowerville to make muck. In the face of Kasi and Sarah Norm. Lusha accepts only the truth. Yeah, when I come into the the face of the of the Kazi, or even if I'm around a mosque uh, and I see the Quran and I see the face of a Kazi, and there's Sarah law, there's the law, Islamic law. I, Bulisha or me, only accepts only the truth. I don't. Ex- I only accept uh, the truth from the path of the masters, which is sort of a sant mat, S-A-N-T, mat, the truth that's coming from, like, uh, Guru Nanak and Kabir. Oh, really? Oh, what about, uh, why are you reading this Sufism, though? Well, I accept the, the truth from Bua Shah. Oh, Oh, so he's accepted? And, yeah, he's uh, included in the parampara. He's included in the truth because uh, he is an enlightened Sufi saint. Yeah. In the face of Kazi and Sarah, Norm Bulasha accepts only the truth. God does justice in every house at every farm. Yeah, and he's, God does his own justice at every farm in every home too so we got to remember that it's all up to god not sarah nor sariat law of the kazi yeah so you accept the truth of god but not of the mosque oh my god Hmm. let's verify who is the lover and where he is yeah so we figured out that he's He's in the Punjab, which may be actually Pakistan, and he's in Queens, and that may actually just be New York, or it could be East Elmhurst, or Jackson Heights, or Flushing, and uh, and uh, he's um, was born a Christian, but he's not. He only accepts the truth coming from his master. And, Bua Shah was born like a Sayyid, uh, a descendant of the Prophet, and but he doesn't accept his Sariatwa. He accepts only the truth. Oh, okay. So we're only giving the truth in this podcast. Uh, so, so now that we verified who is the podcaster and where he is. And who is the poet and where he's from? Yeah. Though well, that's good that you finally identified him a little bit. <laughs> Do you feel more you comfortable on who is the lover and where he is? Yeah, I'm trying to continue to verify who is the podcaster or who is the poet or who is the reader of this poetry. Or who is the poet, and where is he from? Yeah. Well, yeah, why didn't you tell us that in the beginning? Why did you wait to the waiter in the book? Yeah, we wanted to know. And the, it's funny, the one, the one caption called him a 17th century poet, and then this one calls him an 18th century poet. Well, he's... Yeah, well, he's between 1680 and 8, 1757, so he's sort of a 17th and an 18th century poet. Well, he could be an 18th century, and maybe he started writing later. Yeah, well, you're not identifying it. Can't you nail him down? No. 
Well, he's 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 called Bula Shah and B U L L E H S H A L and he's it's the one point they call him a Punjabi philosopher. So is he a Punjabi philosopher? Or I thought he was from Pakistan. Well hmm. He's known popularly as Bula Shah. But his name is Saeed Abdul Shah Khad Khadri. Oh, can you pronounce that in Persian or, or in Punjabi? Or, do you know Punjabi? I thought you had read the Guru Granth and knew Punjabi. Well, yeah, I'm not very... No, I don't know. And then what's this here? Bulila. Bulila, yeah. Huh. He's a Sufi poet, and his spiritual teacher was Shah Inarat Kujari, a Sufi Mursid of Lahore. So interesting, a Mursid is sort of very Muslim too. So most of his material, even though he's familiar with Hindu stuff, he identifies with both. He's, most of his background is from the Islamic side. He was a mystic poet and is universally regarded as the father of Punjabi enlightenment. He lived and was buried in Khazar. He was born in 1680 in Uchka. Uka. How do you pronounce U-C-H in the Mughal Empire. Present day Punjab, Pakistan. Okay. So is it Punjab or Pakistan? It's Punjab in Pakistan. After his early education, he went to Lahore, where he met Inriyat Aryan and became his disciple. Due to unexpected reasons, Shah Dawash had to move to Malakwal, a village of Sahiwa. Later, when Bula Shah was six years old, his family moved to Pandak, which is 50 miles east of Khazar. Bula Shah was schooled by his father along with the other children of the village. Most sources confirm that Bula Shah had to work as a child and adolescent herder in the village. Yeah, when I was a child, I had to work on the farm. Oh, you did? Yeah, my, my father didn't really encourage, he wasn't really that happy when you went out for sports in the high school because a uh, farmer needs his children to work on the farm. Uh, and I was an adolescent herder in the village. So so I came from a small village uh, of Stuben. And uh, and I herded the, often would herd the sheep. Uh, and sometimes I went out to, to feed the cut cattle. I took two as a small kid, adolescent, I would take two full five-gallon pails and one in each hand, and I was only a young adolescent, and I would go out and feed the cattle. The cattle would stand like uh, big cattle. They would stand like eight, ten feet tall, and I would be like only say four and a half feet <laughs> and I would climb up and dump the cattle feed in. You did? Yeah, that was, isn't that scary for a young adolescent herder? Yeah. I was an adolescent herder. Exactly the same as Bula Shah. I'm a small village of Stuben in Willard. It is confirmed that he received his higher education in Kassar. And I received my higher education uh, in Cincinnati. Some historians claim that Bula Shah received his education as a highly reputed madrasa run by Hafez Kalam Murtaska, where he taught for the sometime after his graduation. After his early education, he went to Lahore, where he met Inarat Aryan, became his disciple. <sighs> yeah, that's who's Inarat. Uh, he died in 1757 at the age of 77 and was buried in Qasr where he had spent most of his life and uh, was built over his grave. He was declared non-Muslim. Yeah, he's, 
You were saying he's Muslim, but he was declared non-Muslim. And the same thing happened to me. Like I had did a lot of podcasts, Muslim stuff, and I had read the Quran and all these things. But people declared me a non-Muslim. Okay. He was declared non-Muslim by a few literalist mullah of Qasir, and they had claimed it was prohibited to offer the funeral prayer of Bula Shah due to Kufr Wat, Wat, Fawat allegations put on him by extremists. Yeah, a, a number of extremist uh, Muslims did not like my podcast, so it was forbidden. Uh, so like in Pakistan and certain Muslim countries, my podcast is forbidden. Oh my God. You're kidding me. Well, if they knew it was forbidden, they might want to hear it. So I'm saying it's forbidden. What? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> they, there now they want to listen to it because uh, extremists don't like it. His prayer, funeral prayer was led by blah, 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 blah. Okay. All right. That makes sense that you're similar to him, I guess, because you're a barbarian. I can see that. Mm -hmm. We're still trying to figure out who is this podcaster. Yeah, I mean, people are trying to figure out who themselves are, not... They don't want to know who Pula Shah is. Yeah, they want to know who myself is. Uh, what? Oh, you found them? No, no, no. Oh, that's Olga's. You like it? It's the case. Where's Davies? Davies? This other one is better, Amar. You want a stick up? She needs a stick for hiking. We could even come prior. Olga some bueno ones. If you want them, you can have them. Amar, if you want. Where's Davies? In the coach? Where is Mejor? This is Mas Mejor. Is that no? That was no. No? It's heavy, isn't it? Oh, if you like it. It actually plays music. <laughs> it's like a hiking <laughs> stick. It's ridiculous. It's, it's really ridiculous. Yeah, that's ridiculous. This whole podcast to talk about a hiking stick that plays music it seems ridiculous to me. <laughs> yeah, that's ridiculous. A hiking stick that plays music. This podcast is ridiculous. And it's also been banned. Uh, one of the reasons why it gets so much listening time from Pakistan is because it's been banned there. So, so the old mullahs don't like it, but the young people, they're the ones who are really listening to the Internet. So they, they listen to it. So let's listen to Oh, is that why they listen to it in Pakistan and India? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's generally not not liked by the Christians, so there's hardly any following in the U.S. because it's uh, been banned by the Christians. So. But um, but not in Concord, Massachusetts, because I am I'm very pro uh, Henry David Thoreau and the Transcendentalism. <coughs> it's also like it's not banned in Japan because I did so much um, podcast of uh, Basha, of, of uh, haiku poetry in Basha, and it's very, very favorable to Japan, and, and, uh, and it's very, very, it's very favorable towards the Buddhist. Oh, no, the Buddhists never banned you? No. The Buddhists, uh, they don't ban anybody. And it's pro-Buddhist. Is that why you're pro-Buddhist? Yeah. But you're pro-everything and stuff, and you... Yeah, you you have pride of universalism, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, so... Um, uh, we are talking about Bula Shah's poetry, and uh, 
push out it after the Punjabi Sufi poet and saint uh, Paridudan Kad Kanshakar, 1179-1266, and lived in the same period as other Punjabi Sufi poet Sultan Bahu, B-A-H-U, 1629-1691. Yeah, actually, I read him. He's pretty good. I read a little bit of him. Well, how could you just read a little bit? Is that because you only had a little bit? Or? I don't know. <laughs> but Bahu, Boo, because it sounded like Boo, because we're identifying who is the podcaster and where is he from? Well, he has nickname in the way is Bahu, Boo, or Ba, similar to Bahu, <laughs> Boo, Bahu. Mm-hmm. Uh, why do you have a cup from Puerto Rico? Are you from? Are you Puerto Rican? Or mm-hmm. How do I identify the wife of the podcaster? No, you're from Colombia. Okay. You Colombiano or Puerto Rican? <laughs> you like Puerto Rico? No, not so much. No. You don't know what you like. You like Colombia? You love Colombia? Colombia. No, mm. Puerto Rico, no. You want to go to Mexico? <laughs> cake here. Cake here, oh, vamos. Remember that guy went to Guatemala? We met a Guatemalan. <laughs> so, we're trying to identify. Yeah, is the podcaster somebody where he's from or where he's gonna go Guatemala. in the future? Vamos a Guatemala. Yeah, I am, my identity is that of my future. Oh, so that makes you Colombian? Or? <laughs> Guatemala, no? Guatemala. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we're going to Key West. <laughs> so hot there. Doesn't make any sense to go to Florida, except for in the winter. That is too cold. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe the fall or spring or something. That the falls are beautiful in Maine, though. Well, his life then overlapped with the po- Punjabi poet Waris Shah, um, Er Ranja's fame, and the Sindhu Sufi poet Abdul Hawab, better known by his pen name Shacho Sarmashta. Then Urdu, Mangurdu plus Pusha lived 400 miles away from Mir Taki Mir. Wow. What? Um, he was, uh, he was in Delhi. I actually have read Mir Taki Mir, so. He called him an Urdu poet. Mir Taki Mir isn't entirely Sufi, I don't think. He's, he spent a lot of time in love with his girlfriend. (laughs) Um, but he's from Delhi. What? What? Are we going to the Poet's Walk? Poet's Walk. They have a hike um, up near Rhinebeck with the Poet's Walk where we're going to walk with this poetry. That, so that's how I identify. I am a hiker who reads poetry. Oh, is that who you are? Yeah. Mir Taki Mir. Well, if you're 400 miles away... He's a long ways from Delhi. I didn't know that it's so far away. The Punjab is so far from Delhi. Punjab practiced the Sufi tradition of Punjabi poetry established by the poets Shah, Shah Hussain, Sultan Bahu, and Shah Sarah. Yeah, to get this, you could just look at Wikipedia. Uh, Just read the book. Just read the manual. Okay. Yeah, read the manual to this podcast. <clears throat> they have the films. <laughs> what films does he have? Huh? Mm. Thanks, Amor. I'll, I'll drink my chocolate. She's quite a delicious uh, wife with her chocolate. <laughs> so, we just look, read the manual. Mm-hmm. 
I probe.